Okay? All right. <clears throat> so I wanted to be the different talk this year because we've had computers and, you know, hacking and all this sort of stuff. And at every, you know, almost every one I've been to, there's something else. There's the roasting coffee beans or making the AK-47. So I said, I'll do the different talk this time. Okay? So uh, I made it about building your own green home, but I wanted to key in for the audience about possibly doing this in hackerspace as well. Okay? Um, first of all, all right, y'all broke me. There we go. Hmm, there we go. Okay, uh, first of all, anytime doing building projects or tools are involved or small, fast moving particles, um, nasty chemicals, wear eye protection, okay? Um, during my project, I have almost lost an eye twice, okay? So um, I'm extremely lucky. When I was getting, you know, 10 stitches in my face, uh, I told the doctor it was my lucky day because he was not an eye specialist. So, um, that <laughs> <laughs> so um, like I said, you need to wear these a, a lot, all the time when you're doing anything like that. Okay? Um, just as a note, these are really eye shields that you pick up. Um, safety glasses can take high velocity metal objects thrown off metal lays and other types of stuff like that. Um, the ones you buy at Home Depot can't, so use them within their tolerance range. But, um, you know, painting, using files, uh, blowing off the carport, stuff like that, you really ought to have safety glasses on. Just take it from somebody that knows, okay? All right, why green? Um, a lot of houses are being built. Well, not as many now as was a couple of years ago during the boom, but um, green is a big thing, okay? Um, generally, we think about green in three target areas, okay? Um, healthy, keeping healthy, hopefully keeping you wealthy, and wise, well, use of resources anyway. A lot of times this goes under the name of sustainability. Um, building things that don't permanently use up resources that nothing can ever be built without again. Okay? Um, the healthy, of course, we're focusing in on things like uh, carpet that doesn't outgas, uh, formaldehyde into the interior environment, and you know, pollution during the production chains and stuff like that. Um, green, as far as the wealthy, is uh, efficient house, costs less to run, okay? Uh, lower power bills, lower heating bills, uh, more comfort as well. And uh, sustainability, I said I already hit on that. Does green mean that you have to pay a lot of green? Well, uh, a lot of times it seems like it does. It seems like if you um, uh, look at a lot of products that put promotion out, or if uh, you watch uh, you know, DIY TV and Home and Garden and a lot of those other networks, they're always promoting some green product. You know, recycled sea glass tiles, you know, $15 a square foot, you know, that sort of thing. Um, those things I'm not really a big fan of. Um, I think the green should pay rather than cost. That is, you should get uh, a reduction in future cost for every piece of money that you put out now rather than sort of a feel good, um, I'm buying recycled and it's not really making that big a difference in the world. Okay? So, you know, why do four times the price on one product where a low impact new product uh, is probably as good or better for the overall environment and uh, keeps more cash in your pocket. Okay. So the saving energy is the big, big thing for green. Um, whether you believe in global warming or not, uh, it costs money to generate power. And if you use some of that power, you gotta pay for it. So every you know, watt that you don't use um, is better for your pocket and I think for the world as a whole. Okay. Uh, why do it yourself? Well, not so much in the healthy, I can say that. Uh, possibility on the wealthy. Uh, the wise, um, after doing it, I'm not really sure it's really wise to do the <laughs> DIY, let me tell you. Um, there may be some, uh, some wealth involved in it, but um, it, it's really a, a, a change of trade money for time, and that's called work, okay? Uh, we do it all the time. And yeah, you can do it yourself and you can save money, but you are gonna spend your time doing it, so. Okay. We look at two general choices, basically a spectrum, really, of doing it yourself. 
you can be your own general contractor. That means you have to coordinate and uh, schedule and pay and pick up after and take care of the problems generated by subcontractors. This would be uh, the people who pour the foundation, who erect the shell, uh, who finish the uh, floors, who do the plaster, do electrical, do HVAC, that sort of stuff. Okay. The other thing is you do most uh, or all of the work yourself and um, you generally you can't do it all by yourself you'll need friends or hired labor of course when you start paying the labor you start reducing the amount of money you're saving um, and if you have a project you'll probably have fewer friends when you finish than when you started uh, after asking them to come over and lift heavy things for you on their spare time okay. where are the savings in this whole DIY process labor of course since you're not going to pay yourself a salary you're thinking I'm going to spend this time and keep money in my pocket. Okay. Materials, um, you think, well, I gotta send this, you know, if I'm building a house, whether somebody else did it or whether I did it, same materials are going into it. But there actually is a pretty big um, margin of savings on this, because you can watch for sales. Um, you know, you're walking out of Home Depot and they got a big stack of marble tile there that's 70% uh, off. Uh, you want marble tile in your, bed, in your bathroom and you can pick that up and, and save some money. Uh, the builder is not going to be looking out for that kind of deal. He's going to go in there and he'll have his provider and he'll say, I need a, you know, a, a pallet of tile and please deliver it and whatever the price is, I'll pay. Okay. Um, browsing on Craigslist, finding things um, that people redo in their own projects, um, a lot of good materials there. Um, I've gotten a lot of good deals. I've gotten $1,200 sliding glass door assembly for 100 bucks and the time it took to move, move it. So, there are deals out there on that. And salvage stores such as the Habitat for Humanity or you know, Habitat for Humanity Recycle Store or whatever they call theirs, I don't remember. Okay. Back to that, whether it's wise to do it yourself. Okay. Are you really sure you want to? You may save money, but you will spend the time to do that. Okay. Um, so, you know, your weekends, evenings, vacation time, uh, TV time, you'll have it, but you'll feel guilty that you should be out there building and finishing your project instead of you know, watching CSI. So uh, it really is a big, big commitment. Okay? Um, there is a general theory, economic theory, that you should do what you're really good at and pay other people who are really good at building to do that for you. Um, so uh, again, a thing to think about. Okay? Um, for this crowd though, uh, it, it's, it, it is a little bit different equation because a lot of the things is, you know, the hacker space, the hacker community, and if you're looking to provide, um, you know, a space for yourself, uh, doing it yourself as, you know, the folks in Nashville, I know Sky Dog and, and his folks have, you know, got a building and redid it and have space now for doing their projects, uh, that was sort of a community effort and they were basically doing it yourself, and if you are doing that, you might as well do it so that it's green, which makes it's going to be more comfortable and to have a lower power bill that the hacker you know, group is going to have to pay. So um, going in it alone is, is not something I would recommend. I did and I regret it. Uh, but with a group, I think that's a whole different thing. Okay. Can you do it? Well. Yeah, you, you may do uh, most all of the work on your home. This includes even dangerous stuff like electrical and plumbing. If it is your property, you can pretty much do it. You can't go out and do it for other people without the proper licensing. And this does vary a little bit by jurisdiction. Uh, some states and communities are a lot more restrictive on that. Um, but most of them are, are pretty open if an owner is doing work on their own property. But that says you may do it. The question is, can you? Okay. Do you have the skill set? Um, do you want to watch enough, you know, of the uh, home shows to see how do I put down tile or how do I uh, put down floors or how do I, you know, put on mud on drywall and get it sanded smooth? So um, the, the thing that kills me is that usually when I'm just getting pretty good at something, I'm done with that project. I don't have any more tile to put down. I don't have any more framing to do, et cetera. Question. Uh, if you have a friend who is a plumber, or is a mm -hmm. as long as you, the homeowner, are helping on the project, is it okay for him to come in? Or it's sort of a gray area. Um, 
I think technically not. Um, but well, if he's a licensed plumber, that would be fine. Uh, but if he just has plumbing skills without the official, you know, sanctioned by government bodies, um, it's probably iffy if he does it. But if y'all do it together, right, sure nobody it. is there inspecting every time to see who cut that pipe and glued it up. So uh, if, that, if somebody has a skill, you could certainly bring them in and y'all could do it together. Right. Yes? Yes, and, and all along in the project, you would, for any kind of building, whether you're doing it or whether you're paying somebody to do it, you know, just a builder's doing it and you're going to buy the finished product, um, you will have to pay attention to local codes and uh, uh, all the requirements for, you know, health and safety, basically, uh, sewage, uh, electrical, um, plumbing inside the house, all those types, structural stuff, you don't want it to fall down and, you know, kill the occupants. So that sort of stuff is, uh, is going to be there any time. Right? And a lot of the things as far as, you know, doing the tile and all that, uh, a ton of resources on the Internet, as you know, y'all, the, the interwebs are full of stuff. And some of the videos are actually not of cute kittens, but of actual, you know, this is how you, you know, use a soldering gun to, uh, to put in a copper pipe or something like that. Uh, along here, I'm gonna, every once in a while, I'm going to throw in a quick tip. Uh, just, I didn't really have any place else to put these, and I didn't want to sort of put them all in one place, so I just sprinkled them in here. Um, okay. uh, do talk to your local building official. See, okay, she, I slipped her $5 bill, and she pulled it off on perfect timing. Um, they are the ones that you're going to have to make happy. Uh, some of them are a little bit more receptive to owner builders. Some of them are a little bit more flexible in code. Um, the codes are usually very specific, but the building inspector has a lot of leeway or takes a lot of leeway in whether or not um, he is, you know, okay on signs off on something. Um, electrical outlets, the code almost always says that the grounding plug has got to be at the top. So instead of a little, you know, surprise face on the wall, it's going to be upside down. Um, very few builders put them in that way. And mostly because most inspectors don't really give that much attention to those types of things. Some of them do. They want to be exactly by the letter. So you need to know which kind you're dealing with before you start your product project in that place. And of course, you could move, you know, your location um, a half a mile and have a different inspector that you would have to deal with. Maybe you would have to deal with a county inspector rather than a city inspector or a different city inspector. Uh, and that can make all the difference. Okay? Um, ask them a lot of questions about how to do stuff. Um, because you want their take on it, because again, you want to build to what they answer is the right way to do it, because that's what they're going to give you the least trouble on doing it. And it, again, especially if they think that you're paying attention and want to do it right, that goes a long way as far as, you know, they, they, they are going to be a little bit more tolerant and understanding and, you know, give you guidance. As when you get to this point, be sure you do X, Y, or Z. So uh, before you start your product, talk to the local building inspector, sort of see what kind of situation you're facing. Okay? All right, so that was just a quick tip back to the regular scheduled presentation. Um, how much do you want to do? Um, the question is how much time do you have to work on it? Um, money equals time. And the general equation is if you don't have one, you must spend the other. Um, if you want to have a sidewalk and you've got a month to do it, you can dig it out by hand. You can you know, stake it out, uh, level it, pour it in small batches and basically spend, you know, three 40-hour weeks putting in the sidewalk, okay? Um, or, and, and get by with a very, very small investment in money as far as buying materials. Uh, on the other hand, if you need a sidewalk because they have to bring in some building supplies and they need a surface, you know, to roll it across, um, well, you may have to come in and spend, you know, $2,500, $3,000 to get somebody to come in and that team is going to sweep in and do it in a day and a half and be done with it. So a day and a half, if that's when you got to have it, it's going to cost you $3,000. If you've got a month to do it and you're unemployed or have plenty of time and are looking to get some exercise by digging holes in the ground, uh, <laughs> then you can go ahead and get, you know, I mean, cancel your gym membership and you save some money right there. Uh, you can get, uh, you know, get by for probably $600 for the same job. 
Um, but like I said, it, it's a definite equation and it is ironclad. If you do not have the time, you're gonna have to spend money to make things happen. Okay. Um, and like I said, the subcontractor's team, uh, mainly because he does have a team and they know what they're doing. Um, it will not be you and a few other amateur friends. Um, he'll come in there with the, you know, the mechanicized equipment to, to dig it out with his uh, crawler. Um, he will have a crew that does this every day and they are fast putting up the forms, leveling out, uh, pouring concrete and finishing it. And you know, his six gang crew uh, is going to finish it you know, way faster than your three volunteers and yourself are gonna do it. Okay. Of course, it will cost five times as much to have that happen, but uh, it depends on what you need and when you need it. Okay. All right, Danger Will Robinson. Okay. Um, as I mentioned earlier with the safety glasses plug, okay, um, we have to look at the equation is cost savings minus medical bills greater than zero um, because they, they do come into play. All right? um, uh, I myself have uh, I, I've probably done about a thousand dollars worth of medical bills um, for uh, various things uh, on the project. Of course, this is a project that um, my, my building, yet incomplete building project, has been going on 11 years. So um, I've had lots of time to get hurt and pay for it. Um, you will encounter many dangerous materials and situations. So. Uh, ladder falls and power saws and heavy lifting. Um, Back mm, hmm? Back That's right. Liquid plaster burns. Liquid plaster is a, a strong alkali. Uh, alkalines are not like acids. Acids will, will sort of uh, uh, coagulate proteins and that means they won't penetrate very far into your eye. Um, alkalis, they just open up the pores and just dive right on into your cornea. So um, <laughs> watch out for those <laughs> caustic chemicals. Um, so again, like I said, it is a dangerous situation and you know, working off the ground, um, OSHA is very serious. If you're more than about, I think it's eight feet, eight feet off the ground, you have to be uh, roped off with basically a climbing harness so that if you fall off the scaffold that's eight feet off the ground, uh, you get yanked to a stop with a rope before you hit the ground. Um, that's a thing that you know, costs businesses a lot of time and effort when they're building stuff but it is also to prevent deaths because it is it's quite easy if you fall eight feet on your head you will probably die. <coughs> so it, again if that's not something you want to tackle <coughs> which you may not think about it before you're tackling it so I want you to know about it. Um, again a decision point. Okay. All right. The number one thing detailed plans. This is what I lacked. Okay. <laughs> I said, all right, I want it about this big, about about this big, and about that tall. Um, that is uh, not the way to do it, because you think, oh, I'll just adjust it when I get there, but that takes a ton of time and a ton of resources and waste money and time, okay? Um, houses have uh, multiple systems, okay? The structure, uh, the, super, the shell, the foundation, roof, electrical, uh, HVAC, plumbing, Okay. All of those things have to go together in one piece. If, it is, if you just want to build a shell, you know, like a playhouse for the kids, that is dead simple. Okay. If you wanted to run a, some wire around and connect up some outlets, that is dead simple. If you want to put those outlets in those walls, it's five times more complicated because you have to plan where the holes, where the wires, how to mount them, all that sort of thing. Uh, and again, this is what I did not take into account. And so a lot of times you have to go back and do things like cut holes in concrete slabs to get drain lines through. And uh, that can cause a lot of digging and sawing and sucking in silica dust, which is also a dangerous chemical that you don't want in your lungs. Okay. All right, another quick tip. <coughs> don't leave hammers on top of the ladder when you're up there. <laughs> okay. This applies also for pliers, caulk guns, and pretty much anything heavier than a pencil. Okay, because later on you'll need that ladder somewhere else. So you yank it and something falls off. And if you're lucky, it gets, you know, your shoulder and not your toe. But, yeah. All right, um, again, the thing I should have done and didn't, start small to build skills, okay? You think, well, golly, a small project, 
it's got a higher overhead because you know getting the concrete truck out there uh, there's a certain cost just for that first yard of concrete and it doesn't you know bump up that much for the next three yards so I'll pour something three times as big instead of just big enough for this small project um, they don't do the math that way think I need to practice okay uh, I need to test the waters um, you could do it with, a, with like a cabin uh, if you already own a home I, I hesitate to say do an addition because uh, if you if your plan is to go build your own home um, you, you don't want your training <coughs> exhibit as part of the house you're trying to sell so uh, hmm? I sp oh, well, I, I haven't even got to the, the hazards <laughs> of, of married life, um, but uh, it definitely uh, that is a major factor. If you are in a relationship and you wish to end it, um, please start to build. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so a cabin, um, if you have, um, you know, possibly family, parents, uh, maybe they either have land or, or they have, you know, a, a little bit larger lot. Um, you could build, like I said, a cabin or a mother-in-law suite, you know, a, basically a mini house or um, the tiny house movement um, is sort of in the same thing is that uh, very, very small houses. Uh, today, um, I'm building a, a, a very like, extremely unnecessarily large house because it sort of grew out of deficiency um, to hold my books and videos and all of these things that we can now store digitally in no space at all. So I have 800 square foot of a you know, library space that I could fit on one Kindle. Um, but with the, you know, the, the tiny house movement is a, 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 a new movement. Um, a f looking at, again at efficiency, um, smaller lots, living in urban environments where you, you know, can basically do more of a European style. You can, uh, walk or bike to um, the local resources, the shops, and so forth. Um, but those are those would be a great little training project. And then, if you did need more space, you could build another one or add on to the one you got. Uh, these would be uh, well. Like I said, you could start off with a cabin or, like I said, a nice playhouse for the kids, and just have that thing decked out to the nines. They'll have tile floors and uh, you know plaster walls and uh, plumbing and electrical and um, they'll be able to play house all the way uh, and you'll build the skills and you won't be doing it so much on the um, on a big job where you get in and realize man I'm over my head I'm not going to be able to complete this in the 20 days that I need to before the next person has to come in and do something and of course, when we're out of time, that's when we have to go and spend our money. Question? Even a, even a small <coughs> poker room. Uh, yeah, support, right? yeah, a poker room or a workshop or something like that. That's a gift. Yeah. That's a gift. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my, build, my starting projects days is over with. So. Um, the the mother-in-law suite, I don't know if people are familiar with that, but <laughs> a lot of um, uh, cities have ordinances that you can basically build another um, tiny house or a very small structure on the same city lot and uh, the building restrictions, setbacks and stuff are relaxed. And basically this would be a house for uh, a, a parent who is aging but not infirm yet um, just to have them, you know, leave the big house up north and move down with the, with the kid but not be in the same house as the family to relieve tensions. Okay. Uh, so you can also help out some other poor fool, I mean a, a self-builder, uh, and see what it's like in their life. Uh, so this would be also, you know, I'm, I'm sure Karma Points would be involved in helping out, volunteering to help out somebody, uh, and also you would get a real, real life picture of what's, what to do and uh, what it's like and the long hours and the heavy weights. How about volunteering for like Habitat for Humanity? Um, that is a pretty good idea. Uh, but if we want to do green building, a lot of the habitat stuff is, is not, they're not going to be doing some of the skills that I would want as far as the green building. They, the, some some uh, habitat uh, organizations are, uh, but a lot of them are just doing good stick building, which I don't think is good enough to really be considered green. Okay. And by stick building, I mean two by four walls, uh, fiberglass insulation, wood siding, uh, uh, drywall inside. Okay. So. <coughs> So um, our house elements, uh, we can break them down into sort of three extremely simplified areas. 
Uh, the shell, which is basically the outside, the interior, which is basically the inside, and the systems, which would include our electrical, plumbing, HVAC. Um, hmm? Yeah, uh, any type of media system that we want to do, uh, smart house, things like that, and you know, full networking and uh, uh, those types of elements. Okay. On the shell, uh, basically foundation, roof, uh, outside walls. Uh, um, depending on the type of method you use, these are the ones that you really have to be sure are going to stand up. A lot of times the inside walls are just dividing space. Uh, but these are the ones that, are, you know, the outside walls are holding up the roof and the foundation has got to hold up everything. So uh, that's what we'll sort of be looking at on those. Um, outside wall, the frame construction is, is sort of the, one of the key points where we'll be making uh, a differentiation. Uh, stick building, which is the most common you see today. Um, SIPs, which is one, one thing I'm a big fan of. I've got a little demo system here I'll talk about later. Um, alternative methods, um, including uh, straw bale, paper trip, paper creep, light straw, earth ships. Um, the earth ships are the ones with the tires full of dirt in the deserts in Arizona and um, tin, you know, the aluminum can walls, you know, basically using them as bricks with mud in between and that sort of thing. Uh, lots of different alternatives. Um, surprisingly, the building codes are fairly uh, adaptable uh, on these. A lot of these things are covered by building codes, and they say this is the way that you want to do them. So, um, more on the shell, and, and that's not the unit shell or anything. This is just the shell of the house. Yeah. Um, this is where you sort of want to put the money and your effort. Uh, because this is, this is the dividing line between the outside and inside, and this is where you will get your most, um, the biggest gains on your efficiency. Okay? Uh, SIPs, like I said, I think is one of the, the big payoffs. Um, it's not that common, uh, but it is a big, big, big jump forward as far as uh, strength and uh, efficiency, uh, insulation efficiency on the home. So, um, like I said, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, just having reflective roofs. If you go down the interstate and you look out on these subdivisions, all the little McMansions, all of them have gray, black type of roof because that's what people like to, their house to look like. Okay? That dries up their power bill. It shortens the life of that roof and of the structure underneath it. If we would just paint them white or use white shingles, uh, it would save a tremendous amount on the heating load for that home. Uh, so. There's a lot of things you can research on the internet and, and find, you know, if you put all the little tricks together, you can really get some big gains. Yes? What about the, um, the clay roof and that kind of debris and the soil and stuff? Is that okay? Um, it is okay, uh, but actually it's hard to actually use that anymore. Um, it's very heavy. Uh, it's, it's, you would think that they're so heavy the hurricanes wouldn't move them, but a lot of times you've got to do extra stuff to hold them down. And what they have today is uh, basically fiberglass ones. So most of the, if you see a new installation that looks like that tile, um, it's probably fiberglass panels, um, you know, overlapping panels that just looks like it. And those, those panels are fine. They can come in, you know, light colors and, again, reflect the sun's heat uh, just as well as, as, you know, regular shingles or something like that. Um, metal roofing, standing seam metal roofing is one of the, the you know, if you can get the, you know, the shiny galvaloon or, or other shaded ones. Uh, but the lighter the color, the better it's going to kick the heat out and um, keep the attic cooler, which keeps the interior cooler. Okay. Windows and doors, um, there's a big price differential on windows and doors. Um, some of the most expensive ones are what they call the low E, and I don't know, there's some special way you're supposed to draw that E, but it means um, emissions or, I don't know, maybe somebody knows, but basically it means resistance to having heat come through it. And uh, triple panes and argon filled and exotic uh, gases inside there, uh, you know, gold coating on the, the interior of it will do a lot of things as far as making that piece of glass, which normally heat runs right on through, uh, bounce the heat back. And they are considerably more expensive than just regular double pane, you know, vinyl clad windows. Uh, and you have to look at whether or not they make sense for you. Um, different climates, um, oops, sorry. different climates, um, different heating requirements, uh, exposure, you know, which side of the house it's on, uh, are those. 
Another, uh, I didn't put it on here, but a, a little trick about getting around the, the fact that you've got a greatly insulated wall and then you've got basically a big hole in the wall with some glass over it that kills, you know, the average of those is, is a pretty low insulated factor. Uh, insulated shutters that you can put on uh, when the temperature differential is big or even, you know, just some of the window dressings that have, um, you know, uh, heavy, thick uh, drapes that will block the heat going through things. So a lot of little tricks we can apply there. A lot of these things we will have to look, is the cost of it going to, you know, be reasonable for our environment? Is it going to pay itself back in, in a time before it needs to be replaced? All right, another little quick trick. A drywall scaffold. This is one of the most useful tools that I ever got a hold of because uh, the little deck raises and lowers. And so if you need to be up tall, you can raise it up there and use the sides as ladders. You can drop it down low and put a bunch of materials on it and roll it around to where you need it. Uh, you can put it at desk height and have a work table. And usually you can find these um, you know, used on Craigslist for about 100 bucks, new for 200 bucks. Um, but it's, it's one of the things that I, I found I really couldn't hardly do without uh, because it's so useful being you know, various height and on wheels. Okay. Now, talked about our exterior. We had, you know, different things that we can do uh, to the roof, to the outside. Uh, on the interior, um, you know, basically we got floor, ceiling, and the walls to deal with. And we have various products there. Uh, a lot of the products here are ones that I think they're, they're a lot greenwashed. Um, they, they claim to be some type of recycled material, but at some ridiculous cost to that. Um, the, you know, regular old tile, various types of uh, ceramic and porcelain and stuff like that. Um, cheap, looks good, fairly easy to actually put down if you want to do the work on your knees all that time. Um, the uh, laminate and hardwood floors, lots of new vinyl products, uh, the linoleum, true linoleum um, instead of vinyl, which is what a lot of times people call uh, uh, vinyl, call it linoleum. Uh, it's coming back, and uh, a lot of the linoleum products are very, very pleasant to work with, and they are natural products. Uh, they're not really uh, petrochemical based like the vinyl stuff is. So, um, got a lot of choices there. Um, green ones. Notice I didn't list carpet on there. I am. A, I just I don't like carpet, and that may just be a personal thing. Um, the uh, the thing on carpet is that it, it it pretty much is always a petrochemical based product. Um, unless again you do a green product made out of natural fibers and it's you know ten times more expensive than good regular <coughs> carpet uh, but uh, I would rather have well placed you know running rugs or, or uh, spot rugs for it of course I put down uh, radiant heat so my floors will be warm and will warm my house um, where if you didn't have that you know having cold tile through everywhere especially in the bathroom is maybe not something that you want to do Yes. So don't you have to be careful with like hardwoods and paints or false organic compounds and yes. laminates or the, the finishing work that's done on them? Yes. Well, um, if you do something like laminate yes. um, or, or solid hardwoods, a lot of those, well, pretty much all of those come pre-finished now. So you don't have to worry so much about the finishes. But um, a lot of the laminates, they, they have a compressed wood component, and a lot of those can contain formaldehyde. So. Um, that's one of the, the big ones is the formaldehyde outgassing. And one of the things about an efficient house is it's tight. It doesn't let air just, you know, go willy-nilly. It keeps the warm air that you have inside and the cold air outside. And if that warm air is getting contaminated with, with stuff, we have to look at having a ventilating systems that replace the air with fresh air every once in a while. And, you know, do some, inter do some research on the Internet, and you'll wind up really getting confused after that. Um, surprisingly, um, the um, I'm trying to think of what they call it. It's the Lowe's brand um, that's primer and paint in one, and they advertise it like crazy on TV. Uh, actually, has very good ratings uh, as far as low VOC. So these things have gotten into the public and business consciousness a lot, and so it, it's pretty easy to find big box store products that that are are, are meeting the good requirements. Um, uh, where before. You know, they just did the cheapest thing and sold it. But now they could, you know, that's one of the things they advertise is, you know, this is a low VOC type of product. And plenty of places that you can go check 
for those types of things. Each of the systems, the paint, the floor, all these, you can go check and see, um, you know, some agency or some organization has rated them as to how, you know, environmental or how chemically uh, sensitive people would re respond to it. Okay. So we got, like I said, other ch choices. A lot of these, um, you know, we, we have to sort of make a payoff on, on time and effort and uh, we can buy, you know, you can hire people to do drywall anywhere, anytime. It's a, it's a, a lot of people out there doing it. Um, if you wanted, you know, to do it yourself, that's, that's a big project. It's one of the ones I probably, if you're doing regular drywall with seams, I wouldn't recommend you track it yourself. Uh, but then, you know, the drop ceilings, well, they don't have drops in here, but most uh, offices have drop ceilings. And you could have those at the house. Have places to run your Cat5 cable if you changed your mind later on as to where you wanted to put stuff, things like that. Um, but again, a whole other system that you'd have to sort of go out, do the research, find out how to do it and get it square and, and look, look good. Okay. Uh, the walls, most, most walls drywall, but you can also put uh, paneling, uh, different types of hardwood, uh, plaster, which plaster is a wet wall. Uh, basically you smear a plaster and it hardens on there versus the drywall which the panels are just mudded at the seams and then gone over. Now, you mix it up. A lot of times uh, I've taken floor products and used those as either countertops or wall coverings. If I have a small section, like in a bathroom, a small short wall, um, I put laminate flooring on that and it looks great, you know, depending on the type of thing. Vinyl, um, lam uh, 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 different types of uh, sheet products that go on the floor, you can glue them to the wall and they work very well. Um, there are the four by eight panels, the wood siding, um, that usually you have to, to paint and keep painting every few years if you put them on the outside. Um, if you put those suckers on the inside instead of drywall, you can hang a picture anywhere you want to because that's a three quarter inch product, you can put a screw in it and it's gonna hold up a heavy mirror, whenever. And it looks pretty good, it's a little bit rustic if you, you know, are looking for that type of thing. Uh, but, you know, just because it says it's built for the exterior doesn't mean it can't go inside. Reverse is not true. If it's built for inside, you probably don't want to put it outside. Okay. Another little quick tip. Okay. Use a tool cart. Okay. I would probably be finished like five and a half years ago if I didn't spend half of my time looking for the tool that I just had. Okay. <laughs> I use it, it disappears, and I need it again. And so I walk around to all the places I was until finally, I said, all right, I'm going to put all my tools on one cart. I'm going to sit it there so when I do, mindlessly, because I'm thinking about the next step, set down my tool, it is going to be on the tool cart right next to me. Okay? Uh, plus, this is great because you always need to work here and then work there, and you can just roll stuff around. And uh, right now, since all the schools and universities and places are getting rid of the big TVs, you know, the big CRT TVs uh, that they had in the classroom and getting the thin ones, um, they're, they're selling all of these great AV carts at their auctions. So I went to the FSU auction and I bought you know, four carts for like five bucks each. And uh, you know, they are just great around the, uh, the you know, farm and in the, in the shop and in the you know, house and stuff like that for uh, keeping track of these things. All right, shop for price. It makes sense, you think, hey, you know, I go buy it. Well, you're gonna buy a lot of stuff and you don't always want to have to wait for the sale to come along. Uh, so you can talk to your contractor sales department at big box stores, Holmes and uh, Home Depot and Lowe's. Uh, both have you know, things where if you're gonna buy a lot of two by fours, um, you can get a price break on it, often 10 or 15%. Uh, a lot of them want to drive traffic to their contractor sales, especially now since uh, building is, is slacked off so much. So if you get the, the contractor credit card, they, wanna, they want you to put the, the, uh, the charges on their credit card. Um, so they are talking discounts on that. Um, if you, a lot of times you think, well, I'll go to the plumbing supply store because you know, they do it all the time, they buy in bulk, they'll have the best price. Surprisingly, a lot of times that's not true. Um, they are structured as contractor or subcontractor service which means that the subcontractor doesn't care what it pays because it's cost plus. If it costs $10, they, they get paid $10 by the builder and their fee. And if it costs $20, they get paid $20 plus their fee. So they don't shop for price 
on these places. They, they value return, ease of return and, you know, uh, delivery policies and stuff like that. Uh, so, like I said, I've had price difference, differences of 200% uh, between a big box store and a specialty, you know, store for conduit and uh, wire and things like that. So, <coughs> I always try to get three bids or three quotes. Um, put the name, you know, the, the numbers for the local building supply places uh, in your phone and if you need something, call all three and ask. They're used to answering that question of how much does it cost uh, and they'll be happy to do that. The, uh, uh, you know, this pays off uh, just as the specialty stores are not always cheaper, the big box stores are not always cheaper either, especially on things that sort of vary in price. Uh, the, I've, I've again had differences uh, on a, pr you know, a, pr a price of 80 bucks versus $140 on exactly the same roll of wire. And, you know, I paid, unfortunately, the $140 because I said, oh, Home Depot will be cheaper. Uh, and they definitely were in this case. Okay. So the systems, energy efficient systems cost more. The refrigerator that you go buy, the, you know, the bigger the rating or the lower the cost per uh, yearly cost of electricity, the bigger the price tag on it. Same thing uh, applies to water heaters and air conditioning and stuff like that. It is often a lot more two or three times for the energy efficient versus the plain old. Of course, the good thing is the plain old was the energy efficient of 10 years ago, so it's always improving on these. Um, the, the key is what's the payback? If it's gonna you know, cost twice as much, but you will get every penny of that back within two and a half years because of lower energy costs, that's a pretty good deal. If it costs twice as much and you're only gonna save $8 a month because of the price of electricity in your you know, in your area and the usage, um, you know, by the time it wears out, you'll still be in the hole from it. So uh, you, you do have to sort of calculate a lot of these things. Like I said, uh, climate and the energy costs um, are a big thing in trying to figure out what it is. Of course, you can go online and there's a lot of calculators that'll help you find those. Well, like uh, local rebates, <coughs> yeah, um, yeah, if you're lucky, uh, there will be uh, rebates either from your, your power provider the city, state, county, federal government, tax, you know, the energy credits were a big thing. Um, ended last year, I'm afraid, uh, that you could, you know, you could spend $5,000 on energy efficient windows, appliances, and you get $1,500 of that back as a tax credit. So, you know, it came back to your pocket. So basically, you know, you saved a big chunk of money that way. Um, some states are a lot better than that. Uh, you know, some, you get, for a lot of solar systems, which I want to just mention solar, um, a lot of systems you could get a federal rebate and then a lot of s uh, states had them and a lot of cities had them. Florida was especially good about that, although it was so popular they ran out of money and the government still, uh, the governor is certainly not going to allocate any more for it. But, um, I mean, it could reduce the cost of a system by 45%. Right? Uh, mm, a lot of those are, are, are still there, but just not as generous as they were. Um, if you're thinking about going solar, that's one of the big systems. Um, most people think electronic panels, you know, the photoelectric panels. Eh, hot water, the technology on hot water, solar hot water heaters, uh, well developed. Lots of good rebates. Payback is in the five to six year range. You definitely probably, if you're building, you definitely probably should put one in, okay? For space heating, unless you're going to pipe the hot water through radiant heat to do it, um, it's, it's sort of iffy. You gotta really look at the system and look at your position, you know, you know trees around the house and things like that. Um, your photoelectric, that is generating the electricity, um, maybe. Um, I kind of think the technology is gonna get a lot better within five years and the price is gonna go down a lot in five years. So you still, I mean, it's still a fairly good deal. Most places have a, a, a pretty reasonable payback on that, um, but I'm holding out a little while and I think it's going to get a lot better in the future. So I may be wrong on that, but I'm thinking. But a lot of people ask about solar as far as green energy. There, you know, there's other benefits rather than just the, the payback, okay, um, on uh, photoelectric, or, uh, you know, photoelectric systems because, you know, if the power goes out, the hurricane, you know, knocks down all the power lines, the tsunami, you know, washes away all the telephone poles that are holding up the electric lines, uh, your system, unless it got specifically damaged, you still can run the refrigerator and have lights on. So 
a lot of people do like having that independence. Although um, independence tied to the grid is the best way to go. Batteries are expensive, a lot of trouble. Uh, most places have net metering, so any power that you generate excess, you can sell it back to the, the power company at that rate and then pull it back out of the grid later when the sun goes down. So uh, again, you gotta check your local you know, mileage. They vary because some states and some municipalities have it net metering and some don't. Okay. Okay. Um, don't point the sharp end towards your body. Um, this applies to chisels and saws and knives, okay? So, um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, if, if, you're, if you're cutting and pulling and pushing, um, don't be pushing the sharp end towards you, okay? Um, oh, and I forgot to put this one down. Um, uh, if you don't ever throw something or drop something uh, if you can set it down because you can drop it and it bounces and breaks something. So um, know that one, okay? Um, if you look to do it yourself, okay, um, you're gonna need tools. So our options are we can buy, okay? Um, if you don't have them, you can spend a lot of money on them. You know, if you do a lot of stuff anyway, you may have a lot of tools. Um, Harbor Freight, El Cheapo Chinese products, okay? Some of those, are pretty good. Some of them are pure junk. But a lot of them, including their power tools, they are copying the best American power tools. Uh, and for 20 bucks, you can get a reciprocating saw with the twist block to remove blades. And that thing is gonna last probably just a little bit longer than it'll take me to lose it. So in many, <laughs> many tool kit situations, um, the cheap one is gonna last and longer than it'll take for you to lose it. And so buying the expensive one is not really gonna get you much more return on it, okay? Um, Sears, Sears is just the best thing about having sales. Um, they will often put certain products on at 60 to 70% off on their tools. Regularly 50% off their prices, which are high initially, but at 50%, they're a pretty good deal. Um, so watch the Sears sales, go onto the online sites, that you know, the deal collectors like sleepdeals.net and. Um, fat wallet and places like that uh, if you need a particular tool or know a project's coming up. Okay. So uh, you can also rent. If you work on the weekend, it's great because you can get a single day usage and use it for like the whole weekend. Try it into uh, work Monday morning, scarred and tired. Um, this bad boy, 450 and they delivered it to my job site and I, they, they didn't want it back until like a month later. So I was able to do all sorts of stuff beyond what I needed to do with this, with this lift system, okay? All right, um, you can also borrow them, uh, but an ethical person should be ready to replace it if it quits working while you have it, okay? And uh, your hackerspace may not wanna let you keep that tool that they have um, for the time it's gonna take you to build your house, okay? Now, recommendations, SIPs, structural insulated panel systems, okay? Um, this is what I have done a significant portion of my house with. These are like ice cream sandwiches with OSB insulation. They pre-cut wire chases at three places along the wall so you can run wires through and drop them out. Um, they are uh, routed out so that when we have a foundation, we set this down on a board that's bolted to my foundation and we air nail it about 100 times um, you know, on that panel and it is stuck there for good. Um, it is any time where the, the, the uh, foam is gonna show, we put two by over it, and these come in two, uh, or sorry, four, six, eight, 10, 12 inch thick pieces, depending on how strong you need it to be and how well insulated it needs to be. So these panels, um, as we'll see in a minute, come in big pieces, okay? All right, so super curious. Okay. They're very, very efficient. They don't have that break of wood along the place. Um, straw bale is another thing I have some experience with. Okay. Uh, this, this little batch of straw here, I put into a wall 11 years ago. And I had, when I pulled it out yesterday, it looked and smelled just as sweet as it was when I went in there. So straw uh, is a super insulating product because it's got a lot of air in it and it's fat. Um, so that's something. If you got a little money and a lot of time, I can say straw bale might do it, okay? Another recommendation is laminate energy, 
uh, engineered floors, these things go down fast and look great. So um, those are some things that I would say, if you're gonna do it, do it with these. These sits panels are pretty nice. Let me get to my strawberry things. Um, so, uh, no, those are paid workers, the assembly. Um, from bare slab to that with, with a flat roof, um, two levels, um, a total working time of 24 hours, three eight hour days. And that enclosed um, uh, 48 by 24 space. So I think that's 2,000 and something feet. Well, couldn't do that over 100 meters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> finishing the inside and putting the outside on it. Yes, yeah, so one question, then I'm out of time. Um, they are the structural member. The fact that the insulation uh, is stiff and is glued to the outside is called what a stress skin panel. And so uh, without any wood going up and down, the skins and the foam together make a super strong uh, arrangement. Okay? Will they cut those to um, the Yes, they cut them exactly to the point where you need them as far as uh, door and window openings uh, length to fit so that they butt together so you can screw them in and do that. Yes? What is the size of a flat roof? Hmm? Um, I actually plan to uh, put a, another roof over that and use that as um, basically a deck on top of it. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Um, on, the, on this part, um, because it's all on the inside, I only need it on the outside. This is just regular decking, um, basically uh, 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 web membranes. Oh, let me see one there. Okay. Um, the membrane there and, and regular decking on top. Okay. All right, I'm sorry I'm out of time. Uh, if you want to ask me some more questions, I'll be available afterwards. Thank you for your attention.